For the longest time I was storing my amiibo all over the place. To amiibo however I gave a very interesting spot. I put them on top of my clock. This gave me the idea of making shelves or containers all around the clock. Sadly the clock fell and broke. <laughs> I still wanted to make this idea happen though, so I made a SketchUp model of how I wanted to look and then I just got to work. I even made a new clock using the mechanism of the old broken one. I didn't record most of this as it was in a public space and I'm really awkward over there and I wasn't working in one place all the time, I should have left my dad. Eventually this clock was done and I immediately knew that I would want to paint backgrounds for each of the amiibo. I was constantly thinking of what backgrounds I would give to which amiibo and I, I really liked most of my ideas. So about two months after making the cases or boxes or whatever, I'm gonna call them cases, <laughs> I finally got to the painting. Note that I had not painted in about three years, if not more, and I'm far from a professional. Uh, I do draw quite often and the skills kind of transfer, but in this video I'll cover my thought process and the things I learned while painting these backgrounds, so maybe that's interesting for you. Um, sorry for the angle this was recorded at, I had to record it with my laptop, which is now covered in paint. <laughs> and this was the best I could make of it. So the first painting was Shovel Knight. I had the idea of a dark purple castle and a simplistic kind of style, which kind of replicated the textures of the NES style game. I tried to make a pretty sky and then added this black stroke where the wall would be, which I then covered in these purple bricks, giving it a very nice effect. I tried shading the bricks, but it got too complicated. I preferred the simpler style. Uh, I eventually added the silhouette of a fence, and I did the same thing I did for the wall with the flooring. And it ended up like this, and that looks pretty nice. The next painting was Pac-Man. I wanted to make it look like a Pac-Man sage, which means a lot of straight thin lines, and I thought I'll do that with a toothpick. Didn't work very well. The background became very messy. Y you can still see what I'm going for, but you would not say that this is something that someone took 15 minutes on. I should have used a technique that I'll be using in later drawings, and I'll discuss it when I do. For now, enjoy this quick speed up. And of course the final result. The upcoming three backgrounds were all going to be for different Breath of the Wild amiibo. Therefore I wanted them to have a similar style. I was not sure how to tackle painting a daylit skybox and thought I'd start by making them all brew. This is a horrible idea, never do this. <laughs> the first of the three Breath of the Wild sets was going to be the champion set. I envisioned them standing on a mountain together somewhere overlooking Hyrule during a sunset. I started off with the sky using this picture for reference. I brought bright red and yellow into the picture and here it became clear why the blue was a terrible idea. It took a lot of layers to get rid of it. When I was happy with the sky I started on the mountains. Because it was the sun down I just drew the silhouettes of the mountains and I highlighted the edges because the sun would be behind them. Using the same picture for reference of the skyline I added Hyrule Castle and Death Mountain accordingly. I made some rocks closer to the viewer, and I made them draw shades on the ground plate to make it all connected a bit more. This took some fiddling around however, as I kept forgetting that the ground plate covers some of the back plate. This will keep happening for a few drawings. The next Breath of the Wild backdrop would be for the Guardian and the Horse Link amiibo. I put these together because their skill is about the same. I wanted the background to have a bit more of a day setting, so I went with a nice blue sky. Using some pictures of the game as reference, I wanted to bring a bit of yellow into this as well, and it worked wonders. I, it didn't really look like a day setting anymore, but the colors worked so nicely together I was completely in shock. I'm, I added some clouds using a somewhat dry brush, uh, giving the clouds a bit more of a puffy feel, and then I went on to the mountains noticing that I should make distant mountains more lighter than closer ones, something that I didn't do in my last painting. So I made multiple layers of mountains, and I also added the twin peaks to make sure you know it's a Breath of the Wild piece. At first I only did highlights around the edges, like with the last drawings, but later I decided the light should come from a different angle, and I highlighted bigger parts of the mountains. Uh, I then wanted to have a grassy field in front of them, 
but I couldn't get the transition between the field and the mountains right, and I noticed it kind of looked like you were on top of a grassy hill looking down onto the mountains, so I went with that and made the edge of the grass look more like a cliff by adding these rocks. I also added some rocks on the ground plate to look at a bit more detailed. It mostly came down to luck, but this is definitely my favorite piece of them all. The colors are beautiful and it makes my eyes smile every time I see this thing. For the third and final Breath of the Wild piece, I really wanted to get an in the fields shot. Both the other pieces were looking down from a cliff, this one I wanted to be in a valley or in a forest. I took this picture as a reference, though I wanted a bit more of a blue sky. As, the, as both the other pictures didn't. I tried to replicate my method of making clouds in the last piece, but I seemed to have lost my touch. My brush was far too dry and the sky became quite messy as a result. I think I think I had a more clear sky in mind when I envisioned the painting. Uh, I only went with one layer of distant mountains in this one as well, uh, as I planned to have a cliff closer in view and some trees in the back as well. I thought that would be enough backdrop stuff. In hindsight, I should have gone for another layer of mountains to give it even more depth. I eventually started using this picture for reference as it has the cliffs that I wanted to have in view, but I struggled to really copy the, the cliff texture in, in the front rock. And I feel like I made the trees and the grass too dark, especially comparing it to Breath of the Wild's actual art style. Uh, I also decided to use a dry brush on the grass on top of the hill in an attempt to make it look grassy, but it ended up just looking messy. Lastly, I did add a little Bokoblin watchtower in the middle of the field, which I did end up enjoying a lot. I was afraid to put it in at first, I thought it might screw up the entire piece, but it was a nice detail. It's also surprisingly easy to remove things after you painted them using some wet paper towels or just a wet brush. Having finished the Breath of the Wild amiibo, I went on to do my final big piece, the Smash Bros. Zelda set. All five Legend of Zelda Smash Bros. amiibo. I wanted to put them all on the Bridge of Elden stage, one of my favorite locations from Twilight Princess and coincidentally also a Super Smash Bros. stage. I didn't really add much to it creatively, I just tried to replicate this image. I like that even though it's another sunset scene, the colors I picked are much more somber than the ones in the Champions amiibo set. A really soothing Twilight Princess art style and making the two pieces quite distinguishable. At first I wasn't sure how I was going to do the sun in the middle of the piece, but eventually I just went for it. I made a red or orange circle at first, filled it in with yellow, leaving a small trim of the orange edge, and later filling the yellow with a bit of white, making it look very bright. It worked quite well and I'm happy with the results. Next up is a much smaller piece for Little Mac. I wanted to have him in a boxing ring, like the boxing ring stays in Smash Bros. It started off with me trying to make the cables of the ring, but failing to make them as straight and thin as they could be. This is where I followed the technique I should have used for Pac-Man. Tape. Leaving a small gap in between two lines of tape and painting the line. After removing the tape, we'll have a thin line of paint left. Of course, I should have done these last, which was stupid of me. <laughs> I ended up not putting too much detail, as I wanted to keep the smaller pieces a bit simple and not too time consuming. I made a crowd, added some spotlights. I should have been careful not to let the left spotlight get covered by the side of the thing. It's a bit of a design flaw. I should have made the back plates fit in the case rather than stick them on the back anyway. This piece was for Toon Link and Zelda from The Wind Waker. So obviously I had to draw them on the beach overlooking the Great Sea. I used this image as a reference. At this point I really started to get a feel for painting skies. Making the canvas blue and while the paint is still wet going over it with white paint from bottom to top as far as you want to go. It really does want this. I also used more paint on my brush making the clouds this time, which makes them look a bit more toony uh, and like the ones on the GameCube version of the game. I added a silhouette of Dragon Roost Island in the distance, which made the piece all the better. I also added the iconic Wind Waker waves, so I overdid it at first, I eventually removed a few.
the next piece it's a Mario! For the NES Amiibo I considered making pixel art backgrounds, but I thought it would be too difficult. I decided to keep them a bit simplistic by not doing Gradient Sky for example, and the piece basically became an HD remake of Mario textures pretty much, uh, with a slightly more puffy cloud and a slightly more detailed bush, stuff like that. At the Wish of Mountain I gave a black outline which really helped them bring a bit of a retro art feel to it. I used the same tape trick to make sure the floating bricks and question mark block would be straight and square. Uh, I made the bricks using the same technique, I made the shovel knight wall, the textures on the bricks on the bottom I kind of goofed up at first. I split them into a grid before painting the textures and that's thinking that's how they were in the game, but they turned out to be much more seamless. I tried fixing it a bit but it ended up looking a bit messy. Lastly I drew the question mark block with a toothpick and I cleaned up the sky a bit and the piece was finished. Next up was Mega Man. Much like with Mario, I wanted to keep it a bit simple and to cut Man's stage as a reference for textures. But I first started a lot of them myself. I just wanted a general idea of the type of colors I was going to use. I regret not using more colors for the sky or adding more things to the sky to make it a bit more interesting. Even though it's true to the game, it looks quite boring now. I should have at least done the gradient for this one. Next up is Duck Hunt, and as you probably expect, I recreated the Duck Hunt stage for this one. Once again, keeping it simple. It works in this, and Mario's piece because there's more to look at. For Mario, it was a cloud and floating bricks, in this case a tree, in the Mega Man one there was nothing. One thing that was wrong during this piece was that I finished it, but I thought I added dirt in front of the grass. This wasn't really necessary as it was already on the ground plate, and when I added too much dirt I tried to remove it, and then most of the grass details got wiped away as well. I redid it, but it didn't look as good in my opinion. I was still happy with the result though. While we're doing the NES games, we might as well do them all. Next up being Link from the first Legend of Zelda game. At first I wanted to put him in a field resembling the first Zelda game, but I didn't know how to interpret its top-down perspective into a side view, so instead I decided to draw the title screen. Um, Having learned from my Mega Man mistake, I gave the pink sky a slight white gradient before adding the waterfall and rocks, and I quite enjoyed making all these remakes of NES art. Next up is what might be my second favorite painting, for a sky with salt ink. Of course I had to draw him in the sky. I chose this image as a reference and got to work. I love the art direction of sky with salt a lot. Uh, the game its textures actually look painted, they use very bright colors, it's, it's great. After adding a bunch of clouds, I started dawdling around some floating islands and tackled Skylofts, with which I got a little bit carried away. <laughs> I knew I was starting to get carried away when I started making a new color for the tent of the bazaar on the island, and I started using my toothpick for posts and trees on the island. <laughs> it did end up looking amazing. Lastly, I was doubting if I should put Link's trusty steed, the Crimson Loftwing, into the picture. And I decided on doing it, as the Bokoblin Tower was also a nice addition to its respective piece. Uh, so I started with some regular red, getting the main shape of the Lockwing down, then I started adding all the details, until eventually I got some actual crimson paint to use for the final layer of feathers. Uh, the shape of the beak was probably the, what I struggled most with. Up close, the Lockwing looks a little bit off, especially the legs, but it's a great addition to the painting nonetheless. Next up is a Twilight Princess duo, Wolf Link and Twilight Princess Link. And how could I possibly have a wolf and not paint a moon behind it? <laughs> I wasn't exactly sure how to make it look good though. I never drawn a moon before, uh, so the first struggle was making the circle. I ended up going a bit too high and had to adjust it, but it actually looked good. Uh, so now I could start coloring it. I just made some random spots with different shades of cool yellow, some a bit extra white, some a bit extra dark, and it worked pretty well. It actually looked like a bright moon. After this I put some clouds in the front of it, and I really focus on making the clouds extra dark in the center and more bright around the edges as they're being lit by the moon. Using my trusty toothpick I put some dots of white stars in the sky. In hindsight these should have been slightly yellow. I ended up making some dark rocks as well as a pine tree, 
And closer to the view, I also put much lighter stone to match the rocks that are on the Wolflink Amiibo already. Then it was time for the final piece. Ocarina of Time Link and Majora's Mask Link. I put them together because their games are very linked and I thought it looked good. But then I had a hard time coming up with a drawing for them that really connected them both. I eventually settled on putting them in the Temple of Time, from Ocarina of Time, in front of the Gate of Time. Time, time, time. <laughs> this was a much more structural painting compared to all the landscape that I've done so far. Uh, I made use of the tape trick a lot to keep the line straight. Um, I should have used it even more as I found out that the Triforce wasn't exactly centered and some other things went off a bit as well. Um, one cool thing that I ended up doing was I took my 3DS and went to the Temple of Time in-game to use it as reference and actually copied the text above the door from the game until it didn't fit any longer, so it's about 80% accurate. <laughs> And here's the final result. Those were all the drawings. And now all that was left was cleaning, gluing all the pieces together and sanding off excess wood. I didn't cut the back place 100% accurately, which is both stupid and smart. It's, it's stupid because the sanding was a lot of effort. It took me another hour. Uh, it's smart because it removed most of the paint that was on the side of the cases. Uh, though this would have been prevented if like I said earlier, the back blade didn't cover the entire back, but instead would fit in the cases themselves. Anyway, here's a picture of the final result, the clock on my wall. I'm super happy with the overall result. Pretty much every painting has a, has a look of its own, and the thing just brings a smile to my face every time I look at it. Thank you guys for watching, see you in another video. Me out. Bye.